Hey, I'm Mike and this is Porty's Chop Shop. Um, so in the last video I ended with um, saying that I would weld up the rest of those uh, frame uh, extension pieces that I did. So I did that off camera. I just welded them all up the same way I did the other one and then made the cover pieces for it to strengthen it back up and make it smooth again. So in this video I'm going to go over making some new motor mounts to accommodate the new wider frame as well as setting the driveline angles so that I know that the everything is set in place and that I have uh, good angles for those U-joints before I build the second motor mount. So I built one of them off camera. I'll show how I do the second one and then I'll uh, show how I did the driveline calculations so that you can do this yourself. Um, this information is pretty specific to the Dalton 620 in this particular case, but these techniques can be used on any motor mount or motor swap that you're doing and the information for the driveline stuff is good for any vehicle um, so check that website out and do your research on that but uh, that's what we'll be going into so the first step is actually grabbing some dimensions and measurements off of the first mount that I made off camera this allows me to replicate those dimensions onto the new mount before cutting it to size and fitting it in place. After duplicating those measurements onto the driver's side mount, I tacked in the passenger mount to secure the motor in place. This allows me to confirm the driveline angles one last time, as well as ensures the second mount is built to suit the placement how I want it. With that first mount in place, I know the motor is not going anywhere and I can work on gathering the driveline angles and confirming that they will work. So this is all you need to gather the driveline angles. Um, it's just a digital angle finder or angle gauge. Um, so calibrate, it's calibrated from the factory uh, and it's precise to, or sorry, it's accurate to 0.1 degrees um, either way. So one important thing with this that I try to do is um, if I can help it when I'm testing different inclines, I will um, make sure that the one side, like the power button here, is always facing the same way. So like if I'm doing a down angle like this, and then a down angle like this, I just make sure that the power button is facing towards that downside each time. And that just means that any sort of inaccuracy or um, bias that this thing has one side to the other, you're getting that same bias on every one of your angles. So we're gonna take a measurement from the front of the engine. Um, you're, you're basically just getting the engine angle and then since I have a one piece drive shaft, we only need one measurement from the drive shaft and then um, just one measurement from the differential flange. So with 
those three measurements and then also the direction which they're facing. So in my case, my engine slants towards the back, down towards the back. My drive line does the same angle downward and the rear subframe as a whole has a slight down angle as well. So you need, you need to know those um, angles and the direction in which those angles are going because you can have like three degrees this way or three degrees this way and that will make a huge difference in um, the operating angle that your U-joint sees if you don't mark down or understand those directions as well. So again, you need the angle and the direction. Um, that's all you need. And then we'll show the calculator and um, see how you can make a determination on whether or not your U-joints are set up right. Okay, here we have the angles brought into uh, drawing representing them. So I got 85.6 on the engine, which results in a 4.4 degree angle. 2.4 straight off the drive shaft and 85.2 off the differential, which is 4.8 degrees. These two combined equals 90, that's how you get those. Um, so we'll take these into, into the driveline calculator. And here you see I input the engine, the drive shaft, and the differential. So you can bring diagrams to show you, this is the angle that I'm talking about, that tilt. This changes the tilt this way. Um, so make sure to pay attention to that and then it outputs your operating angles here. There's some basic rules to stick by and um, some tips so uh, be sure to pay attention to those and do research on your own driveline angles but one of these calculators is easy to find online and uh, gives you the information that you need. All right, now that those calculations are confirmed and I know that the operating angles are good, each within a degree of each other and both at least one half of one degree, I can continue making that second motor mount. How about a montage? that I'm using are the GK Tech ones. Um, they're a uh, polyurethane motor mount, but they don't have one interconnected bolt. So um, a lot of the cheap ones you get will just have one bolt all the way through it, which defeats the purpose of having an isolator. So um, I went with these. There's other options out there, but um, I was able to get these for a good deal. So uh, that's what I went with. So the last little thing, as a little teaser, I got these um, welded on two sides. I'm gonna have to pull the motor back out and um, weld that last side in on there. But both sides looking good and I set the subframe partially in place. So the height is set away from the motor, but what I need to figure out is how far back it is and then obviously square everything up like uh, perfectly so that I don't have to do this ever again. So there it is. This is where I wanted to get to by the end of this video. Um, I'll make mounts off of right here and this is the height at which it will be at. And then I can start building coil towers 
and doing all the front stuff like the tension rods and the um, sway bar and the steering column and the exhaust, all that stuff. So, all right, that's gonna do it for this one. Um, that front subframe is set up to get me in a good place to start next time so that I can focus just purely on uh, getting the measurements for that sub front, uh, front subframe where I want it and uh, secure that all in place and make sure that it's correct. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video and check out my other videos and thank you for watching the channel. Um, just hit 250 subscribers, so pretty stoked about that. Um, I have other projects and things that I'm working on. If you're interested in seeing more stuff that isn't just the truck, let me know. And um, once again, thanks for watching.